Hey you guys, Charlie here. Welcome back to Conquering Kerbal Space Program. Uh, if you remember from the last episode, we just now got this... This plane is now docked to the station here. Um, that was a challenge. It just did not want to line up perfectly, but it is now. And uh, this, by the way, the, that, that struggle, this is the reason why I wanted the docking port seniors. Because they have a lot more, uh, shall I say, authority over larger vessels and they, they it's easier to dock things to the bigger ones so that's why i kind of want it that way okay so the goal here for this we're kind of kind of we're going to kind of be doing things in orbit here uh for a bit I'm not sure how much i'll slow down the video or speed it up or whatever probably not slow it down um we need to get these two cyclotrons that are inside the cargo bay of the plane and we need to get them mounted to this docking port and this one over here so these two docking ports over here is where they need to, where it needs to go um, now the reason I wanted to dock to the station with the plane was to refuel it, but this also serves as a, a sort of a, an ease of access, if you will, for these modules too, because I don't have to like go out and, you know, rendezvous with it again way out here or try to track it down. I, I can use a lot less resources to just pull them out of the, this, uh, pull them out of here when they're already there, uh, when, when, the, when the plane is already at the station. That's what I'm trying to say. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is I want to check some resources here. So this fuel tank has this much fuel in it, which is fine, except I want to fill it up because I want as much weight in the front of the plane as possible. So let's look at these other tanks. We see there's a bunch of liquid fuel here and there's enough in there to fill this up. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Uh, yep, I'm going to go ahead and do that. That process is going to take a while, as you can see but that's okay. Uh, if I keep these windows open, will the transfer continue? It looks like it will. So if I click on other things, yeah, that transfer will just keep going, cool. So if I want to detach this, oh, no, now the transfer stopped, okay. Interesting. So I can't get another window open, but I can, well, okay. Let's go ahead and uh, undock the um, undock this tug. I had some people ask me about the tug. They wanted to know what engine I was using and things on this because they saw the uh, the retractable engines. Let's go ahead and just kind of extend these out to show you. They saw these and they wanted to know what this was. This is from USA Colonization. This is an engine that comes with the colonization mod for OKS for orbital assembly and things. It, it's it's there as an engine that's basically for this. So this tug, uh, they wanted me to take a closer look at the tug. They wanted to see a closer look at the tug. So what I'm gonna do, is this station moving? Oh dear God, are you moving? You better not be. What are you doing? What are you doing? No, 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 no. Why are you moving? That's very bad, no moving, stop. Every time I take this tug off, it always moves the whole station. My gosh. I really need to get this tug like in its final resting place, if you will, <laughs> its final place. So now the station is not pointing normal at all. Uh, that's bad. It's not good. Hmm. Huh. Wonder how this is gonna correct. Cause this thing is just kind of like it's really big. You know what? Maybe it's okay. Like you know what? Let's just do this. Let's just tell it to kill rotation. Okay. So let's just stay exactly where you are. I don't care about your orientation. I just want you to stay exactly where you are and not move. Can you do that for me? If I turn your SAS, if I turn your RCS on, are you going to screw up? Okay, good. RCS thrusters fired all around the station. Should have kept it in place, hopefully. It looks like it kind of did. Oh, that's nerve wracking. Okay, so they wanted me to take a closer look at the tug. Um, it's a pretty simple tug, but it's very effective. We've got two little gas tanks here. These are the Rocco Max X200s. 
on each side. And the reason I did that is because the fuel feeds into the engine that's it's closest to. So um, this engine fires, um, if you take a look at the engines, they always fire sort of like opposite. So like this is the lowest engine, but it fires that way. And then this is the highest engine and it fires that way. And so the, the tanks that are on top of the engines are the ones that feed them. So this tank will feed this engine and this tank will feed this engine. Uh, it might they might be able to take it off of both engines I, I don't really know but that's it was designed with the understanding that they couldn't but i don't know uh, then we have these uh fl r15 rcs tanks uh they have 375 capacity for monopropellant and as you can see i did not fill it up beforehand awesome i can do that it's not a problem um i'm going to extend these solar panels uh the solar panels are just the retractable ones that that kick out so that I don't the battery doesn't die. It's pretty much the only reason for that. You see the resources up here. Um, yeah, and these are from OKS. These are from the universe or uh, <laughs> base industries colonization. There you go. Okay, so we'll retract these back, and then we've got RCS thrusters and all sorts of stuff. And then there's a couple of lights here. Uh, these are enclosed spotlights. They point directly back and and directly forward to provide light on whatever I'm heading towards. And then the cloth and then the whole thing is controlled by what's inside this little uh service bay so the service bay if i open it up you can see what's inside the service bay and inside the service bay we've got just this probe core here and then we've got uh these two batteries which you kind of can see because the sun but yeah two batteries are in there and that's it it's a really simple cargo bay and that, the only reason for the cargo bay is just of course to provide a place that's really nice for the probe to be but also because it serves as a pretty good mounting plate for the arm control from here and then arm the arm and we're gonna go i think first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna grab this is a full battery right yeah i don't need the i don't need the solar panels out then so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna grab this uh, and I need to get my camera sorted out so I can see what I'm doing oh my gosh maybe I can't see what I'm doing anyway because yeah I don't have a velocity vector let's let's just make this the target so I can kind of have some sort of a reference there we go Okay, now we're not gonna like go to there, but we're gonna use that as a as a reference to help me like plan where I'm going and everything. So uh, RCS is on, and um, I think let's go this way. I'm just gonna rotate so that my orientation is more favorable to what I want. No, close enough. It's about like that. Yeah, and this is my frame rate. So I think I'm just probably gonna do post commentary on this because this is gonna end up being a really long video for not a really good reason. <laughs> yeah, so I'm just gonna post commentary this. Oh my gosh, isn't this game beautiful? Look at this shot. Look at the horizon, the blue light coming off of the planet. And we have Planet Shine installed. It's a, a graphical enhancement mod that essentially kind of gets you that reflected light off of the surface of whatever body you're around. So there's like this blue tint to the light that's hitting our craft from that direction. It's just, ah, it's just glorious. I love it. Uh, okay, so basically our maneuvers with the tug is, well, first off, trying to figure out where I have to grab this thing for it to actually successfully grab a hold. I want to get it um, like right in the center. I, I want it to be as close to the center of mass on these things as I can be because I don't want to have to deal with all the twisting and moving around. I'm still going to have to deal with it anyway, but you know, I have got these, I've got these trusty engines here that can use a little bit, give us a little bit more, uh, I guess, push in the direction we want to go. Um, this is pretty much the same type of procedure that we've done with the tug before. Uh, this time, instead of the 40 ton uh, package of kibble that's over there, we have something that's just over 30 tons. Um, not quite centered, but it, it's, it's okay. But I need to get it to the other side of the station 
and that doesn't necessarily, that's not necessarily the easiest thing to do uh, when you can't pivot around what you're normally used to it being the center, but uh, it's not that big of a deal. First, I need to get to that side, and I don't really care how I do it, so I'm just gonna like basically accelerate in that general direction and just sort of wait it out until I get to where I need to be. So you can kind of see I'm, you know, trying to make sure I definitely miss the station. I don't want to hit anything. Uh, but yeah, it, this, obviously our docking ports are all the way over there. The big docking port on the cyclotron, which is at the top of it now, or at least above it now. Look at that wide angle. Uh, I'm setting that docking port as the target. And then uh, I'm making sure that these engines are prepared to slow us down. Now, the reason why I have the engines doing it and not just monopropellant one is because I don't have a whole lot of monopropellant. Um, I mean, there's a lot in the tug, but I didn't refill. I didn't refill it before I undocked it. But the second bit is because the payload is so heavy, it would just take a lot of like it would just take a lot of monopropellant relative to what it would cost me in fuel with these engines. So there's the port. And I'm just gonna kind of coast until I think I'm relatively lined up. The hardest part about this is that, um, like, normally when you're trying to dock to something, you're gonna use the nav ball and you're gonna try to line up the velocity vector with the target indicator. And so that basically what it means is you're headed straight for the target. And that's pretty much what I'm gonna try and do. But the problem with this is that straight ahead of my vehicle is not where my docking port is. It's on the side, just like it was with the kibble trying to dock before. And so a rel like basically kind of a similar uh, move that we did before with the kibble to get that docked, we're gonna kind of try and come in on this on the side. Now initially, this time here, I'm trying to come in on it like on the front, but I'm at an extreme angle. And it's not, the fact that the, ta the station is tilted now is not helping that angle, but I mean, this is space, so there really is no up. Uh, we started at an angle. I probably would have been the same regardless, so it's it's not really that. I can't really blame that. I have to try, uh, basically, blame my piloting skills. Uh, so I got the solar panels out on the tug just to keep the battery charged. There's not a whole lot of battery power on the tug, but the tug uses almost none uh, normally, unless it's using its uh, reaction wheels a lot. And since this is a really heavy payload, the reaction wheels are kind of pulling a little bit of double duty here. Uh, but you know, whatever, it's cool. So this is how I have to do it. I'm basically going to push the tug directly at the target, even though that's not how the docking ports are gonna be. And then once I have the velocity vector, uh, basically right on top of this target, like I do right now, uh, at that point, then I wanna twist this thing so that the correct docking port is on it. So I'm gonna change it to where I'm controlling it from the other port. And then once again, line myself up with the target indicator. Of course, now, for whatever reason, uh, velocity vector isn't there anyway. So I have to adjust it again. But that adjustments, th these adjustments are not that easy to do, especially with uh, the monopropellant being kind of off to the side of where my where I'm trying to control from, in addition to the weight. So there's a little bit of struggle happening here. We'll just skip to the part where I can finally get it. So I'm approaching here, I kind of overshot eventually, but I, I get myself approaching from the side, just like we did with the kibble. And once I notice the little green lights going off on the docking ports, that's when I know, okay, these things are trying to line up now. They're trying to engage with each other. Let's get it lined up how we want. And of course, I'm going to try and get the indicator lights uh, from the indicator lights mod to line up exactly as they are. And that's pretty close. I got it pretty close. So we'll detach the tug and then we'll go back to the plane and we'll grab the next one. Same thing as before, we're going to just kind of shift ourselves around and get ourselves centered. Uh, I'm going to instead use the little docking port that's there on the side of the cyclotron. I'm gonna use that as my target um, because I, I don't have anything to reference and I, I wanna use the nav ball because that's just how you fly in space. Uh, so I'm gonna use that as the reference point, but I'm not gonna try and hit the target indicator. I'm just gonna use it so I know kind of where I am and which direction I need to go. And then once I get myself lined up, of course, it doesn't really matter anymore. I'm not gonna have that as a target. I'll have the, the docking port on the other side of the station be the target. Uh, and using, you know, different camera angles and stuff. It's not hard to fly it and not hard to kind of get where you need to be, just as long as you have that initial reference point when you're trying to approach it from a good distance, you kind of need that. One thing I found interesting about this is that it, when I undock things from the space plane in this way, the the vessels, uh, the, the modules, whatever I am that I'm pulling out of the cargo bay, they get kicked out. Like they don't just undock and make me pull them out. It's like they start moving out all on their own. 
I found that to be kind of interesting. I don't know if it has something to do with just the additional weight of the tug grabbing a hold of it when I undock. Uh, I, I don't know. I mean, the tug itself is not pulling until it's the active vessel, so I don't know. So I'm gonna go to the other side of the station here and I kind of play it a little bit dangerously. I decide not to go around the station. I'm just like, I'm gonna go over top of this stuff here. Uh, and going over top of it, uh, I realize, hey, wait a minute, I'm kind of getting close to my plane here. <laughs> so I try to uh, kind of got to get myself up before I take out my wing. Uh, and then I'm like, okay, cool, I can go down now, but don't go down too much because I'm gonna take out the other modules. So we're playing it really close. Uh, but no, nothing's harmed, didn't harm anything, it's all gonna be fine, Bill can stop freaking out, he was, he was really worried he would have to, you know, get his spacesuit on for an emergency e ejection from the station, uh, you know, from the depressurization or whatever, but eh, it's not gonna be a big deal, whatever, it's cool, it's all good. So, I'm gonna get the engines out, and that's gonna allow me to, again, a little bit more control authority over which direction I'm headed, I can stop my velocity, I can do things I, I I can I can better move in an initial direction with these engines so I'm gonna use those instead of the monopropellant uh, and the same exact thing same exact philosophy as we had before try to get the thing docked to the station and we're probably gonna have to come in from the side when we do it and so that's pretty much what we're doing and I of course overshoot again so I end up on the other side of everything um, but you know, once we get there, I can kind of push it up. It's, 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 it's a struggle, you know, with the, the difference of weight and everything, it's kind of a struggle, but what I'm really looking for this whole time, I, I don't care about anything else other than getting the little lights on the docking ports to start flashing. That's when I know that the magnets are working and that's when I can kind of, uh, not always, but kind of just sort of turn off the SAS and the RCS and just let the thing kind of do its thing at that point. And it's a struggle. I mean, you can see it's like, it's not easy. And this is all being done with like, I don't know, it's probably closer to like maybe 15 frames per second, something like that. Um, it was all being done pretty, pretty low. But once we get the lights flashing, I'm going to rotate this thing around and try to get those indicator lights lined up and uh, kind of use the reaction wheels a little bit just to sort of maybe suggest uh, how I'd like this thing to be, uh, to behave while it's being connected. Um, but it doesn't take that long uh, to, to connect them. It's just the process and like the, the, main, the main reason why we're doing it in a post commentary like this is because this mission takes, uh, I think this mission took me about four hours to do total from takeoff on a launch pad to, um, well, going back to Kerbin. Um, it took me about, uh, about four hours of my playing time. So we're trying to condense that into about a quarter of the time in video. And that's the magic of video, folks. That's all it takes. So we have two cyclotrons installed on the station a lot of you are probably wondering you know what the hell are cyclotrons why do you need these things and that all has to do with the station science mod it's a mod that changes how science is performed on an orbital station it makes it so it's more involved it makes it so that it's deeper it's i guess i guess more realistic but i mean the only it's the only sense of realism that comes from it is the fact that you just don't magically get a science value uh, out of just some arbitrary amount of science and, and data that you put into a station. So you actually have to perform experiments. So that part's cool. Now, one thing I did forget to do completely is fill it up. I, I should have filled up that tank all the way before taking off and, and de unclamping this, but I didn't. I, I should have because I wanted the weight, but I didn't. And as you'll see later on, it, it it probably is the cause of this biting me in the butt uh, because th the entire goal was to have a completely full tank before before uh, leaving the station. That was the whole point of, of, of docking to this thing. And for whatever reason, in my excitement of having this done and going, yay, we got the things docked. I'm so excited. Let's get this thing home. In that excitement, I just kind of said, nah, we don't need to stick to the plan. Who needs to do that? Uh, so we got the um, agroponics modules back reinflated. We got the habitation ring back cycling around. Everything in the station has been returned to normal. The tug has been docked. We don't need to be here anymore. It's time to get this plane home. And so I'm going to try and get myself in a trajectory that essentially supports, uh, you know, going home and with a reasonable amount of speed. Uh, we're going to slow ourselves down. I circularize this orbit uh, just above, basically just out of the atmosphere. I circularize this orbit. Um, I think it's like around 71K ish or so. And then once it's all circularized, it's time to, uh, you know, get ourselves back into the atmosphere. I get myself rotated around. So I have 
relatively the same orientation as what someone who is flying a plane in an atmospheric world would have. And then I start my descent into Kerbin. And um, I, I stick to a different plan this time. Um, th from Based on feedback and also the past experiences of it flipping around, I've decided I want to I want to enter slower. And what I mean by slower is I want to enter the atmosphere um, less downward and more, like I want to stay in there longer. I want to give it more time in the thinner parts to slow down um, because I need to be going slower. And luckily this time I have some monopropellant available, which gives me a little bit more control authority, especially up here where there's barely any air, which is great. Of course, the first thing I notice heating up are the front fins. Um, you know, I, when the front fins are heated up, that tells me, and it's unless there's temperature gauges, I don't care about the red. It can be, it can be glowing the brightest orange I've ever seen for all I care, the brightest red I've ever seen. Uh, but as long as there's no temperature gauges on it, I don't care. Once there's temperature gauges on it, I still don't care unless the temperature gauges are showing it's getting too hot. Uh, so that's kind of what I'm looking for. There's the temperature gauges. That's what I'm looking for. And as long as those aren't too red, I'm fine. If I tilt my nose down, it puts more pressure on those front fins and causes more heat to be, uh, I guess, focused there. So the temperature rises on those fins if I nose it down. If I nose up, of course, it takes the pressure off of those, but then it also gives more uh, atmospheric pressure and more heat to the wings. Not a big deal. I just have to find the balance between those two things. And the balance I'm finding is about 30 degrees, a little bit above 30 degrees, 35, 40 degrees. Um, as I get lower and lower in the atmosphere, I try to keep it around 40 degrees. I don't know if that's proper, but it was working for quite a while. And it works and it works and it works. And we, I start to see myself getting lower than I've ever been before with this re-entry. Um, I mean, it's, 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 everything seems all right. I've got plenty of battery power. We've got just a little bit of monopropellant left. Uh, I still can control things pretty well. We're, we're managing our heat okay. Things get a little bit out of control, but not something I can't fix just by altering the angle of attack just a little bit. And uh, everything is looking just fine until I run out of monopropellant. Um, the monopropellant supply was actually allowing me to keep my nose down because the whole time I'm flying through here, uh, near the near the lower parts of the atmosphere, I'm talking like sub 35, 34K. Um, near this part here, uh, I'm actually staying flat. I'm not even falling anymore. It's, it's hovering around 35K, 36K. And I, if I nose down, I get too much pressure on the front, on the front uh, uh, stabilizers. So I need to nose up, but nosing up doesn't allow me to fall, which is fine. I wanna slow down. I don't wanna go any deeper, but it's just too much. I don't have enough weight on the front still. The monopropellant supply allows me to keep my nose down, prevent me from flipping, and that's cool. It was actually working. Having more monopropellant might be my answer because I don't have enough weight on the front of this craft. There's too much weight on the back. Those engines are too heavy relative to the front of my craft. That's where the weight is, and the way things fall, that's just how it works. The heaviest part ends up falling first. It's The heaviest part is always in the front. And on this plane, that's the engines. So I, I need more weight in the front, but if I can't have more weight in the front, and if it's relatively equal, then maybe the monopropellant's the answer. Maybe if I just... If I hit the monopropellant down and have that sort of push my nose down a bit, maybe I can fight against those aero forces and uh, keep myself around. But at least this time, barely anything blew up. I lost a couple of uh, elevons in the back, and that's pretty much it. I have all my engines this time. Um, I have pretty much all my wings except for those control surfaces. Um, yeah, everything seems fine. But the one thing I did notice is that I can't open the parachutes that are attached to the cockpit. So gladly, nothing bad happened, and thankfully I didn't have any uh, people in the cockpit. I didn't have any Kerbals in the cockpit because that would have been a problem because I can't open those parachutes. I've got six parachutes, if you remember from the previous episode when I was showing you the different changes I made uh, to the plane in the beginning. Um, apparently the parachutes are considered to be under a fairing. They're considered to be uh, too far like clipped into the part, um, into the cockpit which I suppose makes sense because when you mount it on the cockpit, it looks like it's floating in midair. Just by the way the texturing of the part is, it looks like it's floating in air. And so I, I nested it back in. I, I kind of adjusted it to be to where it looked like it was 
you know, actually on the part rather than kind of floating around it. Um, but apparently that's too far because the parachutes won't open. So I need to adjust that as well and look into that. Uh, so basically what we're doing here, 300 meters to go, um, I'm going to fire the engines uh, because my nose is too far down. I'm going to fire the engines here because I'm in a plane and that really works really well. I still have some elevons left and I've got my control surfaces at the front so I can kind of nose myself up. And if I can create some horizontal velocity, I can get it to where it's kind of landing like a plane, kind of. And as a result, we're able to land without breaking anything. Yay! We can pretty much save the whole plane and I end up covering, recovering um, I end up covering 53% of what's recovered, but as far as the cost to get those cyclotrons up there, it costs us about $80,000 worth of like, like disposable parts. And they basically, aside from the costs, oh, excuse me, aside from the costs of the cyclotron and the plane, um, I mean, we, we, we didn't lose very much money at all everything worked out really well. So thanks for watching guys. I appreciate the feedback. I appreciate the comments. Let me know what you think. Like and uh, share the video if you like and subscribe if you want to know when new videos are available. I'm Charlie. Have a great day.